100 lang po capacity ng aming center. 1,200 po ay may evacuate. Eh, kulang pa nga daw po yun eh. Okay na po, ayan lang po eh, kahit tapos na yung bagyo. Gusto <laughs> gusto ko nila. So, okay lang po yun. Uh, so, meron po ba kayong tanong doon sa sinabi ni Sir Adil? Okay lang po. So, Susunod po. Gusto ko lang pong i-acknowledge yung presence ulit ng Monsignor Jerry Santos. Monsignor <laughs> Jerry po, ang una po sa nasa Archives of Manila pa ako, he, gave, he would give a talk on PCP2 on the Church of the Poor. So siya po talaga yung isa sa proponent ng PCP2. So alam ko po kung bakit dear sa kanya ito. Mas gusto po ba ninyo kumate? Ang <laughs> <laughs> gusto niyo ma-dedicate? <laughs> Sir, uh, ano mo bang aawit din? Aawit din Aawit din mo siya. Thank you, sister. I would like to thank my senior Giorgio Galvez, uh, Sister and the whole Sister Lija and the whole NASA team uh, for being with us and journeying with us. Uh, all of you are catechists because every Christian is a catechist, yes. and uh, this is astounding. I'm now texting some of the bishops. We are overflowing, <laughs> which is only a sign that the church is alive. We just had a seminar last week of the International Eucharistic Congress. And uh, these are the same people there. <laughs> and you are back here. And uh, we would like to acknowledge uh, the, the work that has been done so far. The church is alive and I say that strongly. That is why when I mentioned this to Cardinal Chito, the Archdiocese of Manila will slowly integrate this in the modules that, is, that are being prepared by the group of Alderic and Aviso. And our thrust is the formation of the NECs in the Archdiocese of Manila. But it is good that the Manila coordinators are here because we would want to cascade the CBCP modules down to the Archdiocese of Manila considering also that there are other dioceses here. The challenge for us is to bring down what we have received here. The challenge for us is to transmit what we have received. And transmission is not so much there on paper. It is the experience of church coming together. That's the first. And coming together as a church, that means that catechesis is not simply a head trip but a heart trip. It is a movement of the heart. It is the movement of law in our own lives. And uh, uh, Monsignor Giorgio as well as Sister Lydia have been tasked by CBCP since last year, in fact. And I'd like to acknowledge the work that they have done because last year in the uh, year of the laity, they were very instrumental in the writing of the modules. Second thing is, please do not take this in isolation. This is part of a trajectory of learnings of the church in the Philippines. When I say that, it is part of a trajectory of learnings of the church in the Philippines. We take this as a grace-filled event because two years ago we started a journey towards the year 2021. The bishops of our country declare that every year is a year dedicated to one of the pastoral priorities of the church. And uh, the first year was dedicated to catechesis, and we did not even have modules for that because we were caught unguarded. But slowly I'm discovering we do not need modules for the year of integral faith formation two years ago because every year will be a year of catechesis. 
in the various concerns and pastoral priorities of the church. So last year, it is really learning the role and ministry and dignity of our lay partners in mission. That is why three-fourths here are lay people. Right? Three-fourths here. In fact, uh, only a few of us are preached, Monsignor and I. And a little bit of the consecrated persons here. In fact, this is their day. So if you have to, to look at it from the point of view of the Lord's movement, the Lord Himself is forming us. He is our teacher and He is our guide. So this year, and then I'd like to add that as I told you, nakita ko rin kayo last week, because the CBCP also gathered us for the International Eucharistic Congress, which will be next year. And uh, we would want that while the year of the Eucharist is next year, we would want to prepare for the IEC through a series of formation programs. So it is a big challenge for the diocese to what? To integrate what they have learned in terms of this and International Eucharistic Congress. Because the, the, the marching orders that I have from the CBCP is, yes, implement Year of the Poor modules, but also implement the International Eucharistic Congress modules. Challenge for us, how do we integrate? I'll do my work, you do your work. Kasi ang challenge po sa inyo is contextualize the modules in your diocesan experience. We could not do that for you, you can only do that for yourself. Because you know the signs of the times in your respective dioceses. So it's a big challenge for us, for all of us, really to put all of these things together because we are formators of the faith and formation is the most difficult, if not hazardous, ministry in the diocese. Why? It's easy to bring people to social action, to soup kitchen, social services, services. Napakahira tawagin ang mga parishioners sa isang oras ng paghuhubo. Dagdag ko pa, mahirap din sa aming mga pare na mag-aral muli. At pag-aralan iyon, ng may direksyon sa buhay. Kaya, isang paghamon sa amin na ibababa rin namin ito sa mga pare, sa mga diocese and priest. So kindly, consider that and maybe it's a challenge for Ms. Senior and Sister Lydia to kindly consider also that these people, parish catechists, diocesan, catechetical coordinators and directors here present, Social action directors are here. And we are tasked by the church with a heavy responsibility to bring these modules of Year of the Poor and IEC into our respective diocesan parish experience. How to go about that? Well, the first thing is let us immerse ourselves in the modules, learn ourselves, and maybe find a way later on. And uh, it is January and it is the best time for us to learn. Kasi from February to December, ayusin yun. Pero alam nyo, maganda kasi next year is international, uh, year of the Eucharist, right? The, I am presenting to the bishops a plan that as much as we prepare for the IEC, and the IEC in Cebu is January of next year, we should have a mystagogical catechesis. If you look at Evangelii Gaudio, there is a phrase there, mystagogical catechesis. What is that? That is the catechesis after the reception of the sacraments. In the ancient church, it happens that way. You prepare for those to be baptized, confirmed, by means of catechetical instruction. But after the Easter vigil celebration, you have a mystagogical catechesis for the neophytes or for those who have entered into the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. And the mystagogical catechesis is maturing in Christian faith. So what will happen next year is mystagogical catechesis. I suggest that, I suggest, don't etch this in stone. I suggest that the year of the poor 
must connect continuously. Why? Because in the writings of the Apostolic Fathers, John Chrysostom, among others, Gregory the Great, Basil and, and Augustine of Hippo, Ambrose, these fathers of the church discuss mystagogical catechesis from the point of view of social concerns, of issues of justice and peace. And let me add, not only justice and peace, but also integrity of creation. Can we do that next year? That will really be the integration of life, faith, and social concerns, which is the agenda of our bishops. Social, the spirituality of social transformation. So take this as part of a whole series of formation. For after all, the principle goes, you cannot give what you do not have. And the first people to receive this first should be the catechists. And the catechists should have their own methodology, should know their learners, should be imbued by the message, and should be the message living and alive to the recipients of catechetical instruction. So once again, thank you, and uh, I'm glad some of you will be sleeping on the floor tonight. It only shows that we are a church of the poor. It only, you will find joy in just being close to each other. Not in comfort zones, but in cramped places. And uh, you will see how the Lord will move you. And uh, there is electricity here in this NASA place. Nama? Kasi hindi ko akalain dadami tayo ng ganito eh. Akala ko lang kasi dadating mga dalawang putlime. No? Kaya pinadala ng Espiritu sa ito, galing pa sa ipad ni Mang Dayo Sisos. Kaya maganda rin marinig ko. Kaya nakita ko sa Padre Tony, ang ilang nang kumako. Ba't nandito yan? <laughs> Anyway, God works in very mysterious ways, right? Enter the heart of the Lord, enter the heart of Jesus Christ, and you will find sanctuary, consolation, and strength. We are in a state of mission. When Cardinal Tagle dedicated the church where I am pastor last Friday, he stayed in the parish until around 10.30 at night. He was making cuento with the Holy Father. Mga anecdotes niya, grabe. Sabi ko sa kanya, Eminem, saka ka yung ka. Kaya ang kapo nga. Sabi niya, bakit? Eh kasi, ang may Santo Papa ka ba? Hindi naman ako hindi kakapig si Gabi. Kasi ano, si Santo Papa eh, grabe. Kaya tatlong beses kong niyakap na gano'n. Amoy Francis ka, sabi niya, si Ra, sabi niya. Pero sabi ko, magkwento ka naman, ang nangyari, ano mo? Ang isa sa mga kwento niya, maganda, this will segue into the sharing, no? The Holy Father was given the opportunity to talk to the victims of Tacloban in closed doors. And while discussing, ano experience mo? Nung nags nag-share na, ano sa napin ng Santo Papa? Ito, namatay lahat ng kamag-anak. Siya na lang ang natitira sa mundo. Ito, namatay ang nanay at tatay. Ito, namatay ang mga anak. Ito, naputulan ang kamay. Alam mo, anong ginagawa ng Santo Papa habang gano'n? Ang sabi ni Cardinal, gumagano'n lang daw. Oh my God. Just me. Just me. The Holy Father was in the verge of tears. He was so moved by the stories. It was Cardinal Chito that was translating to Spanish. Sabi mo sa kanya, ang galing mo palang mag-Castila. Baka nagdadagdag ka pa doon. Sabi niya sa akin, 
Siyempre, pinilagat ka ko ba? Well, sabi ko sa kanya, Your Eminence, in Ate Your Holiness, will you say something to them? And the Holy Father just said to him, What will I say? I do not know what to say. I am simply here, fulfilling my promise to come here. We have been sent a good figure of Christ. Amen? Amen. But it's no exception. And this I am. Pope Francis must be part of a trajectory in the line of Benedict, John Paul II, John Paul I, Paul the Sixth, John the Twenty Third, up to Leo the Thirteenth. The body of the social doctrine of the church was written by popes whose life is so dedicated to the poor among us. This is what he calls the social gospel. So brothers and sisters, good for you to be here and I'm happy to be here. I'll be here with you till Wednesday. Maybe tonight in the comfort room. I will see. <laughs> Senior Jojo in the next door. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sister Ann.